Well, worthy of note also is the man Benzin Idahosa, whom God began to raise from the late 60s into the 70s. A young man, member of Assemblies of God Church, what CAC is to the West. Assemblies of God is the Eastern Nigeria. There was a revival that came into the country through the Assemblies of God and blew around Eastern Nigeria in the 50s and 60s. Now, he was a Bini man and it was an Assemblies of God church. He got born again and was a member of that church, working with Bata Company in Benin City. And then God's hand began to come upon him in a remarkable way because he was such a man of prayer. He was an unconventional man. He wasn't a very religious kind of person. He was a man that loved to increase and prosper. So one day he bought a motorbike. His pastor has communicated him for being worldly. Every church member was to ride a bicycle. You don't know how far we have come. This man paid a lot of prizes for what the church is enjoying in Nigeria today. The same pastor that has communicated him from an Assemblies of God church, the wife was pregnant, about to deliver, and there was nobody to take her to the hospital. So he came to borrow the motorbike. How does God vindicate the righteous? That's how he got reconciled. Then one day the pastor was preaching a message and preaching, all things are possible to him that believe. With God all things are possible. All the faith scriptures, screaming and screaming. And at the end, the young man walked up to his pastor and said, this thing you are saying, if it is true, that means it is even possible to raise the dead. The pastor said, yes, I've never done it. But if the Bible said it, then it is true. He said, okay, I'm going to look for one. And from when church ended in the afternoon that day till about 4, 4.30 in the evening, he rode his motorbike all over the new city looking for a dead person from street to street. Somewhere around 4.30, he saw a crowd of people and they said one girl had just died. He said, praise God. He raised her from the dead. He asked to pray for her. They didn't want to agree at first. After some time, they allowed him to enter the room and he prayed and this girl came back to life. That was the beginning of one of the mightiest ministries this nation has ever seen. He started a fellowship that grew to about 500 after some years. And then God sent him to meet with this missionary in Elisha. Elton. And it was Elton that arranged for him to be trained. Elton told him the grace of God is upon your life young man but you need training so that you can have the word and last. So Elton arranged for him to go to Gordon Lindsay's Bible school in the United States of America. He traveled to Christ for all nations at its very inception. First generation of students. But he never completed the Bible school because he just kept fasting and praying. He had such passion. His passion was for Africa. The Bible school was to last for two years. After one year, he came to Gordon Lindsay and said, why should I be sitting in a classroom when Africans are dying. Release me, let me go. So they had a private consecration service for him and he was the only student that actually saw Gordon Lindsay release them because before the others graduated, Gordon Lindsay had died. Came back to Benin City with a multiplied anointing. It is reported that those who came to welcome him at the airport, nobody could touch him. Everybody that stepped within 20 yards of him collapsed and it was wildfire from that time on. His way of spreading church ministry and doing crusades at that time was very raw and to the point. It was another very forceful personality. You know God uses all kinds of people. Archbishop Benzin Idahosa was an unconventional man. In those days with the miracle working power of God, he would go into little villages and towns all over the present south-south of Nigeria. Sometimes without any publicity. You go to the market square and look for a blind or a cripple. He will put two drums and a plank. Hold you as if he's trying to give you something and drag you to where the plank and the two drums are. That's his platform. And he will heal you instantly. Open your blind eyes or get the cripple walking. A crowd will gather. He will climb the drum and preach the gospel. People will give their life to Christ. A church will start. Come on, celebrate Jesus. But he was a man that believed in prosperity and God increased him lavishly. He was first in many things in Nigeria. He was the first Assemblies of God young man to ride a motorbike. <laughs> in the new city and god has communicated for it he was the first nigerian minister to use the mercedes-benz car for which he was criticized and called a thief and called many names he took the fire for the prosperity we're enjoying today now a pastor can buy an airplane and everybody is happy in those days you were called devil for attempting to prosper he made it popular to preach in babariga in his days Every evangelist in Nigeria wanted to wear Barbariga to preach. And some people didn't like that, but that was just Benson Idahosa. He was the first Nigerian minister to preach on radio, the first to preach on television, the first to own mass crusade equipment and move from city to city in Africa and even abroad doing meetings. During his lifetime, he ministered in over 130 countries. Many of those meetings were not invitational. He went into nations with his own money and arrested nations with the power of God. When it comes to signs and wonders, Pentecostal signs and wonders, 
there are very few people particularly the gift of the working of miracles you see the thing with the gifts of healings is that it deals only with healings but the gifts of the working of miracles can produce healing results it can also make sands to multiply one of the last miracles that happened in Benin city before he died he came to the building site of Benin Idahosa university he had traveled for several weeks when he came back they said materials had finished he commanded the materials to multiply and they did Archbishop's story sometimes will make you wonder whether somebody is not exaggerating. A boy fell from a three-story building and broke his skull on the concrete floor. His skull was cracked. His brain was pouring out. And they called for him. He gathered the skull and began to pray in tongues. And the skull joined back together. The boy didn't need the hospitals. His grandmother was a witch, a member of the Oboni Confraternity. At that time, the Oboni dominated Benin City. The Oboni Confraternity told his grandmother to warn him that he is disturbing their meetings with the kind of prayer he prays that if he does not change they will kill him so the grandmother really loved him and called him and said my son please 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 calm down these people you don't know them i know them they say they will kill you if you don't stop he said ah for saying that the head of the confraternity is already dead the grandmother started to cry he said no 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 don't talk like that you're provoking them more he said i said he has died the man died original killing anointing benzina idahosa that's his trademark. When he died, they were at his burial. He said another thing. Anybody who attempts to bury him will die. The man does not deserve to be buried. When they were about to lower the man, the secretary fell into the grave and died. The grandmother came to beg him. They have now sent me to beg you. Let's have a truce. <laughs> I remember one famous story that happened. The World Council of Witches had their headquarters in Benin City at that time. There was a very vocal witch who was always boasting he was a witch and was the head of all witches. And then he announced that they were going to have their international conference in Benin City. Then Archbishop Benson Idahosa was already on television. So he went on his own TV program and said, you have heard that witches are coming to do their meeting in Benin City. He said, they will not come. I canceled that meeting. So this other man, they went to him to interview him. They said, this is what Benson Idahosa said. What do you have to say? The man laughed and said, even if Jesus Christ comes down, he cannot stop us. So Benzini Dahosa went back on air and said, Jesus does not need to come down to stop this meeting. That's why I'm here. They now put them on set together. NTA Benin City invited the two of them. Panel discussion. He said, the meeting will hold. He said, the meeting will not hold. That's why I'm here. And then I saw Benzini Dahosa turn and I said, the honest truth, there are no witches in Benin City. The ones that were witches have run away. Even this man is not a witch. And he looked at the man and said, the Bible said, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. If you're a witch, confess it right now and I will kill you right here. The man said he's not a witch. <laughs> Come and celebrate! That was the caliber of man Ben Sinai Dahosa was. And through the 70s into the 80s, up until 98 when he died, even Muslims recognized somebody was around. There was a time Babangida visited Benin City in those days. You know, you don't come in after the president has come in. But Idahosa was an unconventional man. He liked show and he didn't hide it. He waited until Babangida was seated. Then he came in with his own siren. Pure, pure, pure. And walked straight to sit next to the president. And the president got up to shake him as he sat down. Official protocol broke it. That's the kind of person he was. I remember he had a guest one time many years ago in the 80s. And the aircraft was about to take off from Benin City. He ran to the tarmac because his guest had no ticket. And waved the aircraft to stop. And they had to open the door. He came. I have two, three guests. I want some of you passengers to get down. And some people offered their seats. <laughs> That's the kind of person he was. He was a very unusual man. And God used him terribly to open up Nigeria to the gospel of Pentecost. Can we celebrate the man Benson Idahosa? When Benson Idahosa died, even Okada boys in Benin City were wailing on the streets. A few days later, they reported he had risen from the dead. Nobody, even unbelievers, didn't want to believe he had died. He brought glory, honor, and attention to that city. People used to travel from all over the world to Benin City. Benin was the headquarters of the gospel in Africa in the days of Benson Idahosa. Lagos was larger, but more people came to Benin because of a man's grace why must you walk in low voltage when you can have high voltage pay the price lose the friends you need to lose now lose the weight you need to lose now lose the phone you need to lose now consecrate sell out god will use you and i want to say amen yes i've seen with my two eyes dead raised 14 times lepers cleansed many times deaf here many times but the greatest miracle i have personally received is a miracle of contentment. I know that my God will supply all my needs. 
no matter where I am night and day. 